Have you ever wondered how much radiation airline pilots and passengers are exposed to during their flights? Is being a pilot dangerous for your health? In this video we'll explore the world of radiation and learn about the factors that can affect radiation exposure during flight. Welcome back to Aviator Inspirations. My name is Yaro and I help take the mystery out of the aviation industry. Radiation is a bit of a controversial topic as some people believe radiation from flying has no real harmful effect on pilots, while others claim it has serious cancer causing dangers. So what is radiation? Radiation is the energy that travels through space and matter in the form of waves or particles. It can come from natural sources such as cosmic radiation from the sun and stars or from human-made sources such as x-rays, nuclear power plants and radioactive materials. The amount of radiation that a person is exposed to is measured in units called sieverts. However, since the amount of radiation that people are typically exposed to is relatively small, it is often measured in millisieverts which are one thousandths of a sievert. The millisievert is commonly used to measure the amount of radiation exposure from medical tests and procedures as well as from environmental sources such as cosmic radiation and radon gas. It is used to measure the radiation exposure for people who work in radiation related industries such as nuclear power plant workers and radiology technicians. In general, exposure to small amounts of radiation is not harmful and is part of daily life. However, exposure to high levels of radiation can increase the risk of cancer and other health problems. Therefore, it's important to monitor radiation exposure and take steps to minimize exposure whenever possible. The simple fact is airline pilots are exposed to higher levels of cosmic radiation compared to the general population. The amount of radiation exposure that airline pilots receive depends on several factors, including the altitude of the flight, the duration of the flight, and the latitude of the flight path. According to the FAA, on average, airline pilots receive an annual cosmic radiation dose of about 3 millisieverts. This is higher than the average annual radiation dose for people living at sea level, which is about 1 millisievert. At higher altitudes, the Earth's atmosphere provides less protection from cosmic radiation, which comes from outer space. Pilots flying at higher altitudes are therefore exposed to higher levels of cosmic radiation. The amount of radiation exposure increases with the duration of the flight, and the latitude of the flight path can also affect the amount of exposure. It's worth noting that the actual radiation exposure for a specific flight can vary wildly depending on several factors, so the 3 millisievert estimate is just an average. Additionally, pilots who fly more frequently or on longer flights may receive higher radiation doses. Flights that fly over the polar regions at high altitudes may receive the highest levels of radiation exposure compared to flights that stay at lower altitudes. This is because the Earth's magnetic field provides less protection from cosmic radiation at the poles. Additionally, longer flights such as transoceanic flights may also result in higher radiation exposure due to the longer duration of the flight. 6 millisieverts in a year is a typical radiation dose received by aircrew flying long-haul polar routes. So that is just the cosmic radiation. You also have to account for the radiation exposure on the ground. This is a chart of Canadian cities and their radiation exposure. As you can see, if you're a long haul pilot living in Winnipeg, your annual dose of total radiation is about 10 millisieverts due to the high levels of radon gas, which is produced by the Earth. Now, this doesn't account for the extra radiation like medical procedures. A chest CT scan is 7 millisieverts on its own, so exposure can quickly add up. To put things into perspective, in Canada, the annual dose limit for nuclear energy workers is 50 millisieverts, and the 5-year dose limit is 100 millisieverts. 
Solo Pilot with a 10 millisievert per year exposure will only be at 50 millisieverts in five years, half of the maximum limit. If you're super awesome and you choose to be an astronaut, the average annual exposure for astronauts working on the International Space Station is 150 millisieverts. Above 1,000 millisieverts, severity of illness increases with dose, and over 10,000 millisieverts would cause immediate illness and subsequent death within a few weeks. So with these numbers, are pilots actually in danger of developing cancer or other medical conditions? Well, the biological effects of low levels of radiation have been investigated and debated for more than a century. Little question exists that intermediate and high doses of ionizing radiation, more than 100 millisieverts, given acutely or during prolonged periods, produce harmful consequences in humans, including but not exclusively cancer. At lower doses, however, the situation is less clear. This is where the debate amongst pilots, airlines, and pilot unions is happening. There simply isn't enough quantifiable research done to provide any concrete evidence of how much exposure is dangerous for flight crew. According to a study in JAMA Dermatology published by the American Medical Association, flight crews have twice the incidence of melanoma compared with the general population. But much is still unknown to why or what number of millisieverts is actually harmful. We have similar skin cancer risks as truck drivers, welders, golfers, and boaters who spend a lot of time exposed to the sun. So what can we do to reduce these risks? Airlines take several measures to reduce radiation exposure for their pilots and other crew members. Some of these measures include limiting flight time at high altitudes, reducing unnecessary exposure by avoiding flying over areas with high levels of radiation, or rerouting flights if necessary, and some airlines use materials in their planes that can shield pilots and other crew members from radiation exposure. Pilots can also reduce their own risks by using sun visors in the flight deck and wearing sunscreen. In conclusion, radiation is a real threat to pilots with higher risks of cancer than the general population. However, we are still well below dangerous levels than some other professions. So take extra precautions if you personally feel it's necessary, but don't let the threat of radiation limit your flying career. I hope this video helped shine a light on radiation in the flight deck, and if you have any other aviation related questions, leave them down below. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode.